G'day, Keithy here. Thanks for joining me again. So I've got a big day ahead of me today and it's really hot. The rain has just stopped. So as you can see out there, the grass is a bit long. Actually, it's really long. That's an understatement. It's thick as. I've got some weeds up the back there I need to get rid of. I've already done one dump run. And I don't know, summer seems to be the time to do like your house clean up stuff, decluttering, whatever you want to call it. And that's exactly what's happened here. So it's been raining like crazy lately up here. Haven't had the chance to get out and do any full driving because it's just, it's instant bog everywhere. So that ain't happening. But um, we've had a day of sun now and things are starting to dry out enough that I can get back into things outside. So we've got the yard there, I'm gonna do that later. I don't need to show you that. You've already seen that Ryobi video there. So you know what the Ryobi gear's all about. Uh, but what I am gonna show you today, I'm gonna to take you around basically. As I poke around, I'm gonna take the Ute out because I haven't driven that thing for, I don't know, three or four months. And it's really funny, I've got a funny story about that Ute and I'll tell you about that when we get in into the Ute and do a little bit of driving around. Um, don't forget guys, if you want to catch up with me up here in that little section there is where you can get me chilling with Keithy on Facebook. You message, chat, do all that kind of stuff. I've had heaps of people message. Thanks guys, it's good chatting with you. There's a lot of interesting people that I get to talk to, which is quite fun, which is why I started with chilling with Keithy. And uh, very soon, I think I might even start an Instagram page. Thanks to the couple of you guys who have actually mentioned probably should get on Instagram. I'm just sort of a little bit technologically disadvantaged, so I haven't started one of them yet. But it's about time, I guess. Anyway, uh, don't forget to subscribe, guys. You won't miss any of these videos. You get to literally chill with me today. Come along for the ride and enjoy the video. A little mozzy. So it's just occurred to me that I haven't actually shown you in the back of this thing before. I don't know why. I haven't done anything so this is like, I guess you could say this is the before. I've already done a dump run, but I've swept him out. So this is what it's like in the back of my ute. She's got like this, it's not really a textured paint or anything like that. I think it's just normal paint, to be honest. I have scuffed it a few times because I bought this thing as a workhorse when I did buy it, despite the fact that it's got these bloody 20 inch Simmons on it. They're very nice rims. I do have a set of um, SS rims from the the SS Ute that I'll uh, one day I'll probably put on this because I do use it. its primary job is a workhorse. Like I don't use it to do school runs or any of that anymore. Um, just hasn't got enough seats for for things like that or any family outings or anything. So it literally sits in the garage and does bugger all unless I need to go for a run to the dump. So I got some green waste there I need to get rid of as well. If I got time this afternoon, I might knock that one over as well. Yeah, you can see at the back there, it's got this little wooden, and or it's carpeted, um, I don't know what you call it, cubby box. So the bloke that I bought this off actually put that in there. I, I made the um, little winglets there with the, the latches on them. It used to just be solid, like you couldn't use it because there's a subwoofer in the car and that's like a subwoofer box, that's how he made it. And I thought, well, there's no point having a ute and like that that's space right there that I could be using to put things in so I keep like tie downs and you know a couple of towels and whatnot and so, so if I'm using the ute I can actually cover up my load and um, you know I can protect the sides of the ute I mean it's not perfect this thing but it's still in really good condition so I'm going to look after it when I do use it so that's a before I also put down these um these little tie down points little eye bolts after I got it again nothing there's no way you could tie a load down in this thing beforehand so now you can that's what I've done with that. So I'm going to fill it up now. I've got a fair bit of rubbish to get rid of, some old chairs and whatnot. I've got rid of my old fridge before. It's like getting rid of the dead wood in your life, really, and don't run in it. You feel so good afterwards. Um, yeah. All right, I'm going to start loading this old girl up. Pretty funny fact, though, uh, without quoting the numbers on the door, I'm pretty sure this thing has a payload of about 970 kilos, which is pretty decent. It's just a Commodore U. Like, it's... It's actually got a, a equivalent, if not better, payload than some of the dual cab utes that are getting around. So that's not too bad for this old girl. I'll tell you a bit, about, a bit more about it um, when we're driving around anyway. All right, very hot. The big girl is loaded up, ready to go. Let's go and dump this stuff. Now you can see it's pretty full. I wouldn't say there's a lot of weight in it, there might only be 200 kilos in that. 
That's good. This um, tonneau cover is really good. It's got rare earth magnets all the way around it. And it's just got a couple of these little uh, pen clips just to double secure the tarp when I'm using it. Very handy thing to have, eh? This ute is just so good. It just does everything as asked. The only thing it doesn't like is articulating the suspension because it hasn't got a lot of wheel travel. So I've been caught out a few times having to rock it and push it and muck around trying to get it out. But it goes all right. All right, she's pretty hot. As you can no doubt see. Where's my keys going here? Let's get this old girl going. Welcome to the ute. Turn that down. You see the old stereo there, subwoofer, sick. Let's go and do a dump run. Did the aircon up when I got it, put a new condenser and um, dry receiver and all that kind of stuff in here. Um, I think there might be a leak in the system somewhere. So I have to chase that one down so that I can find out what's going on and I can actually have aircon in here. Because it's very hot right now, I tell you that. Gotta have the windows down on these hot days. So a little bit more about this old girl. I haven't really shown you too much. So it's a 2000, it's an S pack V8 uh, VS Series 3 U. So, what does that mean? Probably not a lot if you live overseas, you probably don't really care too much about that. But this is essentially one of the last of the VRVS type shape, that second generation Commodore shape. And it's got the Series 3 got a uh, roller cam, so it's a hydraulic roller, 5 litre V8, whereas all before that uh, were only uh, flat tappet cams. And the ones with the roller cams also got sequential injection. Oh, another red light, lovely. Love the red lights. So the difference between sequential injection and I think the other one was called batch fire or single point or whatever it is, multi-point. I don't know. Uh, the difference is this motor will inject fuel at a, a similar time as the valve's going to open in a cylinder, whereas the multi-point injection of the previous five litres, and correct me if I'm wrong here, um, it would just open up all the injectors when it wanted to. I mean, it was it was an easier version to manage uh, ECU-wise, but it's still not a bad thing. So what have I done to this old girl? Uh, well, as I mentioned before, I did the aircon up when I first got it because you can't live in North Queensland and not have aircon in a car. I used to, back when I had my Tirana years ago, get around without aircon. It was really hot, but I guess maybe when you're really young, you can uh, you put up with a bit more. Oh, I don't know. See, back then, I never thought I would have had a car that was A, automatic, and B, uh, air-conditioned. I never thought of it, you know. It was sort of just... It was, it was very blase at the time. I don't need that. And this old girl, she's a good rig, so it's got the wind down windows and everything. It's pretty old school, but that's what I love about it because it's simple. It is very simple. It's got that roller cam five litre, it's a very smooth motor, lovely motor. It hasn't had anything special done in terms of the diff. Uh, it's just got the, the standard ratio diff in it. Pretty sure they were a 308 ratio. The transmission, on the other hand, that's a different story. This thing's got a built transmission, and by built, I mean built like 600 plus horsepower, no worries. Everything inside of it's billet, it's got um, boosted servos and everything like that. So, uh, when it shifts, it shifts very hard, which is really cool. I'll show you in a little bit. It's got the 20 inch wheels on it, 
with uh, 245 tyres. But otherwise, it's pretty stock standard. Hey, like it's got the bonnet scoop. You've probably seen that one before. There's not too much to it. It's simple, and that's what I love about this thing. And this is why I'm hanging onto it because really, I mean, I've got the trailer. I can always do dumb runs with the trailer, but this thing is that simple. And it doesn't cost anything. I don't know about I mean, you guys or any of you other guys that might have five litre utes. This thing doesn't use any fuel. It's using like less than 10 litres per 100 kilometres. That's pretty cool. And this doesn't get driven on long trips. It's a worker, hey. It just, it just does dumb runs. And uh, that's, that's about all that I take it out for is dumb runs these days. But it doesn't get nursed. It doesn't get flogged either, I'll admit. I just service it when it needs a service. Then I park her up again. It might be once every two or three months I actually put fuel in it. <laughs> it doesn't use much of that. It's pretty good old here. Like we're just sitting at 80 k's an hour now. It just cruises along so effortlessly. Even with the exhaust, it's actually quite pleasant to be inside the cab of this thing. There's not much to do to it. I've got to get that aircon sorted, definitely. I wouldn't mind neatening the interior up a little bit. It's pretty well standard interior. The seats are standard. Whatnot. It's nice. I don't need a show car and that's not what I've got this for. The previous owner put this blue roof lining in. I don't know, it's not my particular taste, but it is what it is and that's something that I've got to live with. And I like the old girl. Let me know what you think. What do you think of the old girl? I've got the thermo fan in it too. If you've seen the video that I made up on the thermo fan, it's a pretty good thing. Like this thing's sitting in not even a quarter on the gauge, on the temp gauge, we're driving through the city here. And that thermo fan's just doing its thing, keeping the temp nice and low, which is really good. And we're getting to the highway here, just before we get to the dump, and I'll probably turn the thermo fan off uh, for the highway there, just natural airflow is enough to keep the car cool. It's hot. Once this car goes, and the next car, and maybe out the car after that. Do a zero to 100. Alrighty, here we go. Hopefully, this works. Close to zero to 100.